Hi, I'm David Healy, and I would like to introduce you to a new sample library that we have been working on for the past few months. The library is called CZ Alpha. It's a synthesizer library, and all the patches were created on an original Casio CZ101 synthesizer. We split the patches into four groups. We've got bass and leads, effects, keys, and pads. There are 100 patches all together across all the instruments. In this video, I'm just going to run through the interface and show you how the instrument works. Let's start with selecting a patch. So to choose a patch, we can just click here in the patch selector and from this menu, choose a patch. We can also use these two red keys on the keyboard. Pressing the D key goes up to the next patch and pressing the C key goes back down the list. The list loops around as well so we're at the first patch now and if I press the C key it goes to the last patch. Let's have a look at this central section of the interface. Here we've got uh, two filters, we've got a high pass filter and a low pass filter and by default, with the uh, resonance of the low pass filter set to where it is, it gives a pretty flat response, as if there's no filtering applied. So until you move one of these faders, you won't get a filtering effect. To turn on the filter initially, you've got to uh, enable this button here. While we're looking at the filter, I should mention that each patch remembers its own settings. So if I restore these to the defaults, and if, I'm, if I move this fader to the maximum setting, and we go to the next patch, you'll see that that fader for this patch hasn't been moved. Now, if you want to make a change on one of the patches and you want it to be applied to all the patches, just enable this global button here. Now any changes you make will be applied to all patches. So again, if I move this beta to the top and go to the next patch, it too has the fader moved to the maximum value. Only changes that you make when the global button is active will be applied to all the instruments. So global is active and I've moved this to here, but if I disable the global, button and I move this back down to about the central position, if I go through the other patches they'll still be at the top because the global button is no longer active. And now we'll just reset that and that resets it for all patches. The next control in this central area is the offset control. This moves the start position of any samples up to 150 milliseconds forward. This is good if you just want to skip the attack of the samples. Let's find a sample with a bit more attack to it. So it's just moving that start position forward a little bit. This is good when used in combination with the envelope controls up here. So we can increase the uh, start position and then perhaps increase the attack to get an even softer attack to the sample. Over on the left side, we have some effects. We've got Portamento, which is a glide feature. Let's go to a new patch. This knob here controls the speed of the glide. This button activates the octave doubler. What this does is it'll play whatever key you press, it will play it an octave higher as well. It'll, it'll trigger the sample an octave higher. When we get up to the top octave, 
there are no samples an octave higher, so we play the same note twice but pitch shift one of them. So you get the same effect. When the octave doubler is active with the portamento glide, we get a glide into the first note. This section is for an LFO for creating a vibrato effect. The depth knob controls the amount of vibrato, the rate knob controls the speed of the LFO, and this fade knob provides a fade in time into the full effect. This knob can be modulated, as can pretty much all of the knobs and sliders on this interface, by right clicking and selecting Learn MIDI CC Automation and then moving a hardware controller. So I'm just moving the mod wheel there. Down here we have a reverb and a chorus effect. Let's look at the reverb first. So we've got a size control, this uh, determines the size of the virtual space for this reverb, and we've got a gain amount for the amount of reverb to be applied. So we'll hear the sample without the reverb first of all, and now with the reverb. The chorus effect works in, in a similar way. We've got speed control for how quickly the effect happens, and we've got gain for the amount of effect. Over on the right hand side of the interface we have the envelope control that we briefly looked at. So this is just a standard ADSR, we've got attack, decay, sustain, release. So the attack controls the, essentially a fade in to the sample. The decay is how quickly the sound tails off into the sustain portion of the sample. and the release is the release time of the sample. Okay, the arpeggiator is a simple arpeggiator. We activate it by clicking this button here. We can choose the rate of the arpeggiator here. We can choose the duration. This is how long each step in the sequence will take. By default, it's 100%. We can choose the number of steps in the sequence, between 2 and 32, and we can choose how the notes in the sequence are distributed through the octaves of the instrument, so you can go from minus 2 to plus 2. When you're playing lower in the range of the instrument, you're not going to have as much effect from minus 2, uh, because the notes aren't there, and the same when you're playing higher in the range, having it at plus 2 isn't going to have as much effect. This menu here allows us to choose how the notes we play are triggered, in, uh, in which order they're triggered by the arpeggiator. We can draw in this table to indicate which steps in the sequence are going to have a note on, and which are going to have a gap or a note off. We can draw in here by right clicking as well and dragging to create straight lines. Let's make, make this pattern global. Just have to move one of the steps in the table and it'll be now applied to all the other patches. And let's choose up down. Let's distribute it through the octaves slightly differently, and we'll decrease the, the uh, duration of each step. 
and let's increase the rate. All right, before we finish, let's just have a quick look at the other patches. So this is the base and leads patch. We've also got the effects patch. All of the patches have the same interface, so once you've learnt it for one of them, you'll be easily able to find your way around the other patches. This keyboard at the bottom, by the way, doesn't do anything, but if you click one of the keys in the right place, there's a little Easter egg in there for you. This is the keys patch. And lastly, we've got the pads. Alright guys, thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful, please go to the website, check out the demos, there's also a free trial version of this library, it's actually just the same, the full thing but uh, with only a few patches in it, but it'll give you the opportunity to try out the interface and see if you like the way it works. Alright guys, thanks a lot and I will see you next time.